everybody experiences that. And, and I think too, Ryan, that, that we, our faults and failures, they hurt. And I think there's another underlying fear that if I go to counseling, I'm just going to get advice and they're just going to tell me what I need to do different or better. And I, and that's also not what counseling is, is about, you know, it's, it's not an advice giving arrangement. Uh, Certainly that can be a component of counseling, but what, what I also think happens is that people get so overwhelmed by their, their hurt. Uh, that could be the result of their own faults and failures or, or other people's faults and failures and the way those other people's faults and failures have hurt them. It's like, man, the last place I want to go is someplace where somebody's just going to tell me what I've done wrong and how I need to do things differently. Yeah. And it, often counseling is just the opposite. Counseling yeah. can, can very much be strengths-based, right? Yeah. And help people get in touch with what their strengths are and facilitate a person's capacity to, li- to live in their strengths. Yeah, yeah. And we know how we how do we train counselors, right? We we train counselors to, to we, we tell them the best the best thing you can do for someone who sits across from you in a session is just be present with them and just to listen. And I think that is something that's pretty rare anymore in our culture to to have a a type of relationship. And in counseling, we would call it the therapeutic relationship, but to have a relationship sure. where the whole purpose of that relationship is just to hear me out to be focused on me, this idea of unconditionally positively regarding the person across from you. And I think that's the piece that sometimes people forget with counseling is, you know, we typically counselors have had to work through their own stuff. Like we, we typically <laughs> sure. can't sit in a session with someone until we become aware of, of our own messed upness and worked through it ourselves. And it's only when we're able to do that, that we're able to sit across from somebody so this idea that that it is just about advice giving, it really isn't. It's about hearing who you are, understanding your story, and accepting you where you're at. That's that's the heart of, of counseling. And I, I read a study just this week where some researchers were trying to gauge uh, the value of of, uh, of validating and listening to people. And so they they asked some students to come to a, a lab and to do this task that was like a crossword puzzle. And so at the end of the crossword puzzle, the students could turn it in for a cash reward, right? So one group, when they turned in their crossword puzzle, the researchers thanked them for it, asked them if they had trouble or questions for it, and then asked them if they wanted to repeat the task. The second group, the researchers just got the paper with them and paid them. And the third group, the researchers got the paper and shredded it. So the catch is each time the paper was turned in, there was a decrease in the amount of reimbursement Mm -hmm. and the people who were validated and listened to whose concerns were uh, accommodated, uh, those people by, by a significant percentage continued the task to the point they weren't even paid to do it. Right. So, so just to be validated and heard and listened to Mm -hmm. um, is, is so motivating. Yeah. It helps you stick through the tough stuff. It helps you keep going. It helps you find the courage to face fears. And, and so this the study after study, this was just a fun one. You could get people to do crossword puzzles for small, small dollar amounts. If you just tell yeah. them that they're great, ask them if they need any, any, any help or have any questions they want to be answered. But on a much larger scale, man, that, that kind of thing really makes a difference um, and, and it's a really big part of, of why counseling can have such an influence on people. Yeah. Yeah.